This video is not sponsored, okay? I simply use Arclone and I think it's an amazing tool. So Arclone lets you work not only with your local files on your like a Windows, Linux or MacBook laptop, let's say, but you can also copy and synchronize all your files and folders with any storage provider you can think of. If you want uh, to back up your local files, for example, with Google Drive or OneDrive, then just use Arclone. And maybe if you want to move files from Amazon S3 bucket to Dropbox, let's say, also <laughs> just use Arclone, it will work fine. Arclone lets you copy or synchronize files between cloud storage providers. Maybe you want to move some files from Dropbox to, I don't know, Google Drive. That's also possible. And uh, you can install it on anything really. It, it works with, uh, on Windows, on Linux, even on FreeBSD, and even they have a Docker image. So <laughs> really you can choose whatever your preference is. And uh, I say copy and synchronize, but if you check their official website, you will see, well, yeah, you have copy, you have sync, you have buy sync option. You can move the files, you can check them, or you can even mount your like a uh, cloud storage provider as local network drive. I hope, yes, <laughs> you get the full picture now. And so let's see how to install it and uh, how it works. And uh, because I have to pick something, so maybe I will show you how to copy or sync some files from my local Ubuntu machine to Google Drive, let's say. And uh, the process is similar for all sources and destinations, so it doesn't really matter what I pick. You will have an idea uh, how to do the same for any other sources and destinations. We have to first install Arclone, and it's very easy, as we just have to follow their official guide. If we scroll up here on the, on the main page, you have that Install tab. And this is how you install on Linux, Mac and BSD systems, using just this command, so let me just copy it. But you can see on the right, we've got macOS installation, Windows installation, Package Manager, Docker installation, etc. But uh, all I need is this for now. So I just go to my terminal, and I will just paste it. Enter, and sudo password. Enter again. That's it. You can see Arclone was successfully installed and it says now run Arclone Ar config. Sorry. I mean, you don't have to run Arclone config. You can, you can just run Arclone and press enter and it will give you all possible command parameters. But all right, let's clear that and let's run that Arclone config, as they say. Enter. And what does it say? It says no remotes found. And what is that remote? Remote is that remote location you want to configure. And the first thing I want to configure is Google Drive. I think it's the most popular. Every person who has a Gmail account will also have Google Drive. The default one, I mean, like 15 gig or something. So it asks, make a new one? Yes, I want new remote. So it's option N. I press N, enter. Enter name for the new remote. And the name can be anything you want, but uh, make it something that makes sense to you, all right? I will just call it Marek uh, Gmail, not Gmail, but uh, G Drive, yes? Google Drive. Enter. Now you have to find it, where it is, <laughs> you know, what number it is. So we scroll up, you can see loads and loads of options. You can basically configure anything, but I can see 20 is Google Drive. So I pick 20, yes? Not Google Photos, but Google Drive, option 20. So let's scroll down. I say 20, enter, and option client, blah, blah, blah. But you can see, press enter to leave empty. And most of the times these default values or whatever they say, it's really the choice you also want to go for. So I just press enter, I just leave it blank. Here again, it says leave blank normally. So, all right, why wouldn't I press enter? And now it asks, what kind of access do I need here? And I would say full access, all files like reading and writing, okay? I don't want the read only or any other option really. I need full access. I want to read and write from my Google Drive. So I say one, press enter again. And it says option service, blah, blah, blah. But first thing I actually see is leave blank normally. So that's what I do, press enter. Advanced config, again, no is chosen by default. So I don't even have to press N, I just press enter. And now it asks us, if we want to use web browser to automatically authenticate our clone with our remote location, like Google Drive. And uh, because this is Ubuntu desktop, so I have that graphical user interface, so I can say yes, and we will authenticate as if we would normally do when we authenticate to our Google account. But if you run, for example, Linux server and you don't have that graphical interface at all, then you would choose no, all right? because you would have to type all the details here in the CLI. But I say yes. I mean, I don't even have to say yes. It's chosen by default. So I just press enter. And now, if you wait one minute, 
not one minute, sorry, a few seconds. It's already here. And the fact is I'm already uh, even authenticated to my Google account, so I just have to choose it. If you weren't authenticated in your browser, then you will have to simply type in your Gmail address and the password for that Gmail email address. Because a Google Drive uses the same credentials as your Gmail account, yes? So in this case, I just choose my account and it asks if I allow Arclone to be able to access this Google account. And I say, yes, I want that's what I'm doing, yeah? And it says success. You can go back to Arclone. But if I go back to Arclone, we can see it already switched to the next question. Configure this as a shared drive? Well, <laughs> that's your choice, but uh, it says again, no is by default, so I just press enter. I don't want to have it shared. And we have configuration complete. And it asks, is this mark drive a remote? Yes, well, that's chosen by default anyways, again. But that was the whole point, yes? I want to keep it. I want to have it configured. I mean, I can type Y or I can just leave it empty because uh, yes is chosen by default. So press enter. And that's it. It doesn't quit automatically. It says current remote is Marek G drive. This is the name I gave to this remote location. And I have to remember it, Marek G Drive, Marek Google Drive. But it doesn't quit, it lets you create yet another one. Maybe you want to create yet another one, like a OneDrive, yes? But I don't want to do it at this stage. I just say Q, quit config. And maybe let me clear that. If I run our clone config again, you will basically have the same information again. It will list all your current remote locations you have configured and if you want to create a new one maybe or maybe you want to delete this one yeah so then you would use the option but i want to leave it as it is i just press q and that's it really so i have my google drive opened here and you can see i say my google drive this is like a test google drive in case i leak some credentials it doesn't really matter because this is just for purposes for, for this video because really it's it's a fresh google account and you can see i don't have any storage used there is basically nothing is here as you can see it's a place for all your, fi all your files but i don't have any but what i can do now i can go back to my cli and i say our clone maybe just run our clone okay press enter it gives you all those possible command extensions. Like you have that by sync, you can perform bidirectional synchronization between two paths. But for now, maybe I want to create a directory. Make a directory, all right? I will use this. So I say, maybe clear again. I say our clone, make dir, and then I type the name that I used for my remote location. And I called it what? Marek G drive, yes? And every time I refer to my remote location, I use colon at the end. So I say make directory on my Gmail drive. And uh, what do I want to call it? I say my folder, maybe. And press enter. Took two seconds. Look at that. Can you see it in the background? My folder. It's been just created in my Google Drive account. All right, cool. But what if I want to move something there? Maybe, what do we have here locally on this Ubuntu? There's nothing special. Let me touch the file, marek1.txt. Let's say I've got some files here, yes? Maybe this is the file I want to move from my laptop to this folder on Google Drive. So I just say, our clone, and maybe I don't know what is the command actually. I press enter again, I scroll through those commands, and I see, ah, there is a copy command. All right, so I can use this. Let's clear that. So I say, our clone copy, and then I have to uh, specify source and destination. Source is my file, it's marek1.txt file, and the destination is my remote location. It's marek g drive colon my folder. So I copy this files, uh, file that I have locally here to my Google Drive, that's the name for my remote location, to this folder called my folder. All right, press enter, and that's it. So let's see if it's there. So I just double click on that. Look at that, marek1.txt. So if I go back, I know my folder has this file inside. But uh, what if I want to remove this folder? If I run our clone rmdir, it's, for, it's to remove directory, and I say marek drive, no, sorry, marek g drive, I called it, my folder, press enter. It says directory not empty, because rmdir is only to remove the uh, folders that are empty, but ours isn't because marek1.txt is there. So to remove the directory that consists some data, some, some files, I have to use purge instead. So I use up arrow and I just change that rmdir to purge. 
And now if I press enter, now you can see it's gone. And if I go here and refresh it, oh, <laughs> I didn't even have to, it did exactly the same time when I refreshed it. You can see there is there are no files or folders. But again, if I'm simply not sure why that uh, remove directory didn't work, you know, but I can still run our clone and just go through them and I can actually see rmd remove the empty directory, all right? But purge is remove the path and all of its contents. So you don't have to Google anything. Everything is already here included with all the instructions. That's cool, isn't it? And now I will quickly show you another example of remote uh, of how to configure remote uh, location. And I will use that uh, OneDrive this time. It's also fresh, never been used. You should already have an idea how to configure it. But uh, if I go through one more, I thought maybe maybe it, it will make it even easier. So what I do, I say rclone config again, press enter. I already have my dr uh, Google Drive. So I say new remote and I create another one. Name for my remote, uh, so what, Marek OneDrive, full name maybe, something like that. Press enter, and now again you search where it is. And all right, it's at the top, Microsoft OneDrive 36, number 36, so I say 36. Again, client ID, leave empty, all right, here leave blank normally, okay, press enter. Now it asks if it's like normal Google, uh, sorry, OneDrive, or if it's cloud for US government. I will choose one, which is global. Option tenant, I have no idea what it is to be honest, but doesn't really matter because it says, please enter to leave empty. Okay, I will do that. Advanced config, no, it's default, so I just press enter. And here again, web browser to automatically authenticate our clone with remote. The default is yes, and yes, that's what I want to do. I press enter, another window will open. And it asks me if I'm trying to sign in to our clone. A bit misleading. <laughs> I want to authenticate to Microsoft account, really, because OneDrive is Microsoft, uh, in Microsoft account. But it uh, doesn't really matter. Continue. Success. I go back. And you can see it's already on next question. And you have to choose the number from below. And it says OneDrive, both personal and business, is number one. The other ones are some weird <laughs> options. But uh, maybe you need one of those. I don't know. For me, it's number one. For most of the people, I would say, would be number one. So I press one, enter, and here select the drive you want to use. I'm not sure what this weird one is. I just choose the <laughs> one with normal name, OneDrive Personal. So I press two, enter, found drive root of type personal, drive okay, I don't know, I hope. So I press enter, and it asks me if I want to keep the Marek OneDrive. Of course I want, that's why I'm going through this process. But it's by default anyways, so I just press enter again. As you can see, you can configure it much quicker just pressing enter because I'm just going through those options slowly so you understand that, but uh, you can go through that in like five seconds. But now I've got two remotes. One is for my Google Drive and one is for my OneDrive. So now let me just quit that. I press Q, let me clear that. And if I go to my OneDrive, and OneDrive by default looks like that. You've got one file and you've got uh, two folders by default plus that personal vault. So if I go back here, I can do something like rclone ls, that's the command to list the current files. And I say, what did I call it? Marek OneDrive, I think. Oh, by the way, you might be tempted to just press enter now. If I press enter, that's what it says. Notice, Marek OneDrive refers to a local folder. Use Marek OneDrive colon to refer to, to your remote. That's what I said previously. If I use the up arrow, if you want to work with local files, you don't use the colon. If I add colon at the end, that means I'm referring to my remote location. Whatever my remote location is that I named Marek OneDrive, that's what I'm referring to here. And now when I press enter, it says getting started with OneDrive. Because we've got one file here, and it's called getting started with OneDrive. But we also have two directories. If I want to list directories, I just press the up arrow and I say LSD. And <laughs> I hope YouTube doesn't ban me for that because it means list directories. Press enter. And now we can see we've got two folders, pictures and documents. And if I want to create one, maybe I want to create new one. I say our clone, make it here. This time I will say Marek OneDrive, colon, I will call it, uh, what, Marek folder maybe. Press enter. 
And in one second, I will try to not refresh this time, because it will probably auto-refresh. No? Okay. <laughs> Let me refresh it then. Oh! <laughs> I didn't. It just showed up. Less than a minute. So again, if you want to work with local folders, you don't use the colon. And if you want to work with remote locations, you add the colon. That's all it is. Alright, I hope you get the idea. There is no point for me to go through every possible command here, but just think of what you can do next. You can configure remo any remote location you, you want, yes? Maybe Google Drive, maybe OneDrive, uh, etc. Then, maybe you can create a cron job that will run every night and will take a backup of all your local files and upload them to that remote location. Or even locations, because you can send them to multiple locations at the same time. Or maybe you want to do the opposite. Maybe you want to synchronize from Google Drive to maybe OneDrive, not even to your local uh, host, yes? You can do whatever you want. Everything is possible with rclone, really. All possible, uh, like, you know, directions. And if some of those Linux commands are not clear, then remember that you can join our Automation Avenue learning platform with hours and hours of Linux or Cloud or Python programming courses and other trainings. You can try it free of charge, so please have a look. It's www.automationavenue.com. And that's all I wanted to show you today, so I hope it helps, and thank you for watching.